Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. My name is Stephen Hayes, my lovely wife, Lauren, and we are SNL. And you're watching Thriving, Thriving and Thursday. Thursday. Cue the music. All right. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. It is Thriving Thursday. So excited to be here. As you know, I usually am. Well, we have another topic on finances that we're going to talk to you about. Except this time, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. We're going to get down a little. I'm going to break it down. Exactly. we got to break it down. Because we understand sometimes the information we're sharing with you, it seems kind of vague. And sometimes you're trying to figure out, like, where, where, how do you get to that point? Yeah. You know, we talked about, um, we're going to be talking about uh, how do you get to your savings, your emergency fund. And when you're looking at a budget and trying to figure out how to make your money work for you, instead of you wondering where all your money went, we're gonna go ahead and hit on that, um, especially that emergency fund and how to yeah. get you there. And really what was gonna happen, I think we should really just kind of take them back to where we were the first time we were introduced to like Financial Peace University by Dave Ramsey, like the, the, the mind frame we were in. Cause we were making a lot of money. We were both working, I was active duty. From when we first um, start, were introduced like to Financial Peace University, um, for me it was, I didn't see how in the world we were supposed to come up with this $1,000 and savings not right. to mention like I had I was doing a budget like it wasn't that I was I was new to what a budget was I wasn't you know a strange to what a budget is um, I had a budget matter of fact and I was working a budget and I actually helped my wife um, pay off debts before we even got married I think it was yeah I got a little crazy with the credit cards well, it was the deals with the store cards, right? They always yes. give that that great deal. Hey, if you sign up today, <laughs> you get twenty percent off every purchase. Yes. Yeah, it was and that kind of points. thing. But back to saving up for an emergency fund. It just seemed overwhelming. Like, where is this money going to come from? We already are like, you know, we save for things, but we didn't have this like just set aside a thousand dollars. And I think we just started by thinking how much can we save a month and save on things we cut out things like cable and now yep. it's so easy to do because if you're getting real intense about it you can do no no tv at all like no cable no sling tv no netflix but for us like even now we get netflix through t-mobile yes yes we do so, so you could like cut out that stuff and that stuff adds up so even if you don't make a lot of money saving I don't know how much is it, it, it cable is anymore because we haven't had cable in a really long yeah, time. It, they're still sending us promotions anywhere from like 50 bucks. I think they had a special for 35 and change. But what if you saved $50 a month um, just starting out? But then also you could sell things that you just had laying around your house. Yeah, we, we went through a, we like a series of uh, like, we call it like a purge. Where we, we look at what are we actually using yeah. daily um, what are we using more frequently in, our, in our, our daily lives? And then whatever we're not using, whatever's been sitting in boxes and stored somewhere that we haven't pulled out, you know, for the last three moves, it's like, well, let's find a way to get rid of it. If we can sell it, we'll sell it. If we know people that need it, we'll donate it. Um, and then really yeah. it's clearing that stuff out, right? Not holding on to stuff that we don't need. I think doing like a, what we call them side hustles, like maybe you babysit. I don't know what people yeah. do. Taking on additional Taking employment on for, our, for, the, for those professionals out there that are learning like side hustle, what is that? Uh, well, tutoring maybe, um, even being a pizza delivery person or something. Yeah, now you, you got pizza do. delivery, they got Uber Eats and, yeah. and, and all that stuff. So you got all these companies now since COVID that um, have allowed us to really open up what we can There's do. There's a lot of things. Absolutely. Um, so. Like what, so really to sum up what you're saying, it really is, it's, it's one of the things you do is to produce additional income in yes. order to get that, that emergency fund set up. And one then of the things we tighten do is, is, what you have for your budget. Sorry. I yeah. to talk no, about. you're okay. But like for us, food is a big thing. I guess we like to eat and we like to eat out and still sometimes like even this month I was like, okay, we need to rein it back a bit because the kids want to have pizza every Friday and there's a lot of people in my family. So I was like, maybe we can eat out once or twice with a pizza and then we can make our own pizzas. Yeah. So <laughs> save money and then kind of create memories too. Taking your lunch to work instead of eating out all the time. Very true. Um, 
I, I did that when we were in Colorado as well, yeah. Yeah, you had the I, same thing every day. I would day bring for ramen lunch. noodles for lunch and I brought <laughs> oatmeal for um, I brought oatmeal for my breakfast. Uh, yeah. the quick the, the quick microwavable oatmeal. And it was like when we when we learned this information about how to do a budget God's way and using those godly principles, it turned what I was doing like and it, it like it like superpowered it, like having superpowers for our budget. I do think that like it's easier to do like it was easier to do when there was just the both of us. Absolutely. Because I'm not gonna like make my kids eat rice and beans. Um, there's nothing wrong with rice and beans, but just no, it's good for your heart. Yes. <laughs> and you know I'm not gonna make them only eat ramen because I want them to have like a healthy balance. But we had done that at some points. So we just like. Yeah, and I was creative with my ramen. Like people were wondering, like, how in the heck I could eat ramen uh, so much, no. like every day for lunch, six even, days a week. Even I don't. Yeah, I, I they, they got so bad. They bought me a ramen bowl. Like there was, yeah. I didn't even know ramen made bowls. They had like its own little ramen bowl and spoon that they bought me. Yeah, I would add some frozen vegetables to it. You know, add a little additional <laughs> seasoning. Sometimes that's hot funny. sauce. Um, it's, sometimes it was protein. like, was it like chopped? Yeah, it was like really. That's what it was like chopped. Cause sometimes we had like leftovers. And I would bring like a leftover chicken breast or something like that, and I cut it up and put that in there. Yeah, it, I, I, you know, it wasn't just ramen noodles, but yeah, I, I that was a sacrifice. And I told my wife, I said, I'm, she's like, I can't do that. I'm like, I'm not expecting you to yeah. try and eat ramen every I day. Wasn't gonna eat I was ramen like, I know that's something that I can do because I really wanted us to make sure we had our emergency fund. But also, you were place. the one that was more eating out more. Because and that that is also true. Yeah, I was but, also eating um, out. I don't know what it is what about, you know, the army and like, especially with our chaplain and chaplain assistants. What, what, what is this? You know, we always got to eat out for lunch. Like everybody's like, we can't I, just like hang out and talk, maybe have a coffee, which is less expensive. food is good. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, if we're following like Jesus example, you know, hey, break bread around, together. Yeah, break bread together. Everybody wants to eat, right? Chili's oh, had yeah. like a special where for you get. For date night, we would go to Chili's and yeah. it was like. I think it's like a, it's something? like two for 20 or like so three for 25 or something like that. You and get then like you just appetizer. get water. Yeah. Appetizer, water. main dish and a dessert. I'm like, oh, come on, you can't beat that. Like, that's still a date yeah. night, and we save money. And yeah. sometimes we'd even share that. You know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even get separate stuff. Like, hey, you choose the appetizer, I'll choose the main course, and we'll split the dessert. Yeah. Yeah. It is harder, I think, if you have less income or if you're, like, a single parent. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not unaware of that being more of a struggle, but I just think um, it's so important to have that, that you have to make it, like, kind of... A priority, right? A priority. If your kid was to get sick, you would do whatever you had to do to save up that thousand dollars. If that was what would save their life, yeah. you got to think about it like that. Um, because even now, like sometimes, because we're still in the baby, we're still in the debt snowball. So we only usually have that a thousand dollars in the emergency fund, which mm -hmm. we probably need to bulk, bulk up maybe some, just because we have a lot of kids. But According to the Dave Ramsey plan, it's just like a thousand to make you go faster. Yeah. And, and so sometimes more, it, we it, go, it, it, like, we have like a car thing that's unexpected, then we have to go into it, and then you have to build it back up. Yeah. So it's not, you know, but it's only supposed to be touched in emergencies. Yeah. And that's where so. if you're married, this is where it's really important what to is have an emergency? that budget talk. Not shoe emergency. Yes. <laughs> shoe emergencies. Yes, yeah, it's important or to have that talk with your spouse. Hey, we need to talk emergency. about how we're going to handle this money. <laughs> what do we do? Let's oh, lay down some ground rules. What is an emergency? Go ahead. I um I was dyeing my own hair at the time. I remember that. I would just do the box tie for my hair. Yeah, save money on that. Save money. Absolutely. So then even if you get your hair cut, it's not, you know, that's expensive. And if you don't want to do that, you just have to find a way, something that you will do. Like, I didn't get my nails done or whatever like that. And that's why I think I haven't in a while. <laughs> like, got my actual fingernails done. Um, sometimes I do pedicure now, but like, I was, before I would like do that all the time, I remember. Like, yes. So, just kind of like saving there. It's kind of like funny, they do that in other countries, right? Trade goods for services instead yeah, of like absolutely. always money so bartering like, right yeah yeah it's not it's not not as known a con uh, concept here in the u.s i mean if you go to like a flea market or a farmer's market something like that you may be able to do some bartering but i can't walk into walmart see something listed at you know 24.99 and say okay I i'll give them 24. no but that, I, they, I mean, they won't let us do that like if you want your date night and you're spending a lot of money on babysitter maybe you can find friends that you can exchange yeah i love that, that too. i love it no i, I think that like for us like that that's exactly it you know we got friends that also have kids so Hey, you know, if you could watch our kids on Friday, maybe we watch your kids Saturday night, and then we're all getting date nights. It's harder nights to in. find a fit though at four. I feel like we have to babysit one and a half times to make up for the 
make up for the difference of the amount of kids we have. Uh, bigger families will understand this. It can be more challenging when you have a bigger family, right? It, oh, it, that, yeah. that does, you know, whether it's the finances or finding a sitter, yeah, that can be more challenging. Finding a deal on things, like I, people that are local here, I'm sure there's some in every city. We found the local buy nothing, buy nothing stuff on, on um, Facebook. So you can get a bunch of good stuff there and you don't have to pay money for it. All right, Facebook, make sure you drop us a little, uh, little <laughs> coin in our No, our we account. got like a TV yeah. um, that someone's getting rid of. I got a elliptical for free. Mm -hmm. it, it just squeaks. That's the only thing that's, there's nothing wrong with it. A bed frame yeah, for the, yeah. one of the kids. I got power wheels. Bikes for kids. Yep, bikes for kids, yep. So instead of spending that money, it's kind of saving on that end. It's great because what we're trying to do is we're really just sharing with you some of the money saving tips. Um, we talked about how you can save money. Um, we've talked about how you can uh, introduce additional income, use your talents, find those talents that you have, things that you can do, whether it's like services especially, mm -hmm. where it's not gonna cost you a lot to do it, um, that you can provide for others if you know how to do hair. I know uh, some hairstyles out there or some people that know how to do like braids and extensions and stuff. Being able to do that, that's really expensive and it can be time consuming. However, for those that can do it, they can actually charge you know someone to do that hair and that's, a, that's side money they can make additional to their job or income. Using what you have until it's like broke. <laughs> like, yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, we've had our same, in our room, we have the same bed, which I don't love since we were married because it was the only store it was the only bed that there was in Alaska. That was available in, in Alaska when store. we got married, yeah. So it's like And we did try one night on a futon couch that, that I found terrible. really cheap at Walmart, I think it was, or something. Yeah. It, was, it was someplace, uh, Fred Myers. Fred Myers had the, the futon. I put it together. It, it was like, okay, this <laughs> is uncomfortable. As soon as someone got up, that's <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, yes. over. Yes. Yes. Say, hey, that's what happened. First, that was our, we were first married, yeah. just got our first apartment together, and that's exactly what happened. Every time. Every time somebody got up. got up to go to the bathroom, something like that, the yeah. whole thing would flip. Whoa. It was always. It, it got to the point. It's like no, 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 wait, 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 and it was too late. <laughs> I was already rolling across the floor. Yeah. Of course, it'd be nice to have a new bed and stuff, but like it's unnecessary. It's this, there's nothing wrong with this bed. Besides, I just don't like the aesthetics of it. Yeah. But yeah, it's one of those things. Like okay, it's functional, maybe not our fashion, so it's not fashionable, but it's functional. So for now, we keep the bed. Now, once we've gotten through these baby steps. We can save up because we got, once we get our, all our debts paid off, then we can save up and we can just buy the bed that we want. We could, which I like to get another sleep number bed because it's the new one. Cool. We could repurpose it, if you, but this one would be kind of hard to do that. But sometimes you have like a bed you could just like paint or repurpose it in some way to save money. Yeah. And, but put it in the guest room or additional income, right? We could when we save up it. to buy a new one, we could sell this one. Yeah, because we don't it comes need it. with the dressers and stuff. Absolutely. Our whole set. When we were kids, the off-ramps were terrible. But I, I think know. that the FDA has kind of fixed some of that. I or don't know. USDA, USDA has fixed some of that. I remember eating like off-brand, I don't know what it was. It was supposed to be like corn pops and it had just like pop up. Mother, if you're watching this, <laughs> man, so the, 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 the Navy commissary had like this box of cereal, so generic. It was a giant white box, black letters on it, no fancy font, no fancy design. It didn't even show what the cereal looked like. It just said, Cheerio, oh uh, no, it didn't say Cheerios. It said like um, uh, oat O's or something like that. <laughs> and you open it up, you pour it out. It looks like Cheerios, but it wasn't Cheerios. Um, you put water on it. I mean, not water, you put milk in it and it puffed up like a balloon. It tasted absolutely terrible. It, it was like eating a soggy box. <laughs> It tasted absolutely terrible. I, yeah. I remember gagging on it and it was like, this is I don't is know, gross. but now like my mom used to get things at Aldi's, which I don't know if every state has Aldi's, I don't know. That's like a... Yeah, thing. Aldi's is a grocery store where you can actually do some thrift saving, you know. Things are really cheap there. And I now heard that they have organic fruits and vegetables. I haven't really been to the one here. I think there's like one here somewhere. Yeah, probably is. Uh, if you're making $20,000 or less, $500 in your emergency fund just to start you out. And again, this is to make sure that you're not trying to go to a bank or anybody else to try and take out a loan or to try and take out another credit card, hoping that that's gonna get you out of the debt, which was really just gonna put you further in it. And we know this because we make these mistakes too. We're people, that's why we're trying to share you some of these yeah. best practices. You've done that a time or two. Think about what the bank building looks like that you go to. Think about what the place that you live in looks like. Who do you think knows more about money or is at least really savvy with how they handle money? It's most likely going to be the bank. So what we're trying to teach y'all is some skills that are going to help you be more savvy with how you handle your money. 
And Not are, tricky, but just savvy. Go ahead. And we took um, the financial peace course. I would recommend that sometimes churches give it, or you can go to his, you know, Dave Ramsey's website. Um, I'll put a link below um, where you can you can get information for his website. Okay, that way sometimes you can go and check it out for yourself. Though. Yes, and on his website he gives you information. You look yeah. for a local class. Uh, sometimes it's through the church. Some some communities. That's pretty much it. And get out of debt so that way you can. Live and give like nobody else. That's what I want to do. Absolutely. These are actually biblical principles that Dave Ramsey uses in his program. If you're practicing these principles, these principles are definitely going to get you not only out of debt, but uh, to the point where you're building wealth and then leaving an inheritance for your grandchildren. Like that is what I'm talking about. That's how you leave a legacy. Look, I think it's time for us to wrap this thing up. So I'm going to look over here. I'm going to give you one over here, and I'm going to tell you all, we appreciate y'all for joining us this evening on Thriving Thursday. Remember, keep thriving. Y'all have a great night.